Okay, so target shares may be surging. JD, not so much. Macy's, not so much. Macy's share sliding earlier the most intraday in a year. This after the company cut its net sales guidance for the full year. It cited a more discriminating consumer and heightened promotional environment. Mary Ross Gilbert is Bloomberg Intelligence's senior retail analyst. She joins us from Los Angeles. Okay, so we have known that Macy's has been facing struggles for years at this point. Uh, what did we learn that investors did not like so much in the most recent quarter? Well, I think what investors didn't like so much is the fact that they missed their top line estimate. So they were looking for a sales decline, just not to the magnitude that they experienced. So what that meant is that their comp sales, and we're really looking at just the go forward store base because they are planning to shutter 150 locations, but those stores and their nameplate were down over 3% on a comp basis. And the reason, look, Macy's faces secular challenges as an operator. They're less convenient because they're large department stores um, and they're facing the competition from more convenient and competitive shopping options. And this hmm. includes not only some of the specialty apparel retailers within the mall, but it also means that some of the more promotional or off-price operators, such as a TJ Maxx, uh, what, you know, some of those discount operators, including, you know, even Burlington stores. I thought you were so going to say, that, Mary, I thought you were going to say competition from online, like yeah, Sheehan's too. and the like. Yeah. Well, that's also playing a factor, too. Okay. Absolutely. So when you just think about the overall competitive marketplace, but also you should note that Macy's is also very promotional. Almost every day they're advertising a promotion. And if you click on Macy's online and then you start to go away, it'll immediate flash, hell, we'll give you, we'll give you 25% off. They don't want you to leave. So they're doing what they can. But the one thing that we did see in their numbers is that, this new initiative, which only began in the first quarter with the new CEO, Tony Spring, who came from Bloomingdale's and really right sided that business. What we did see is that the 50 new stores that they've enhanced, what did they do? They brought back service. Hmm. Service has been absent from department stores for many, many years. They brought it back in these 50 stores. They enhanced the assortment. So that meant that they brought in new brands like Karl Lagerfeld, Avec Lamy, Donna Karen and French Connection, and that is growing sales. So their comp sales lifted 1%, outperforming the rest of the go forward state, uh, stores by 470 basis points. So that's huge. The other thing they did, those stores are brighter, they're cleaner, they have more modernized signing. And then of course they have salespeople in handbags and shoes, in fitting rooms and in ready, ready to wear for both men's and women's. And that is really giving them the lift. The problem is, is they need to move faster and they need to extend it across the rest of the go forward stores in order to be successful. So I think what investors are not happy with, it's not moving fast enough. So Mary, essentially bottom line, Macy's has figured out kind of the secret sauce of what they need to do. They just gotta kind of make up the batches and get it out to everybody. Is that essentially they just have to move quicker? Like they've figured it out, is that fair? Yeah, Carol, I think they do. I think that I think that's definitely what we're seeing in the first and second quarters with those first 50 stores turning in positive comps. That's certainly what it looks like. Yeah, because I always think about, I mean, it's the same thing I asked Jen Bartoshis about, you know, when it comes to Target, who is their customer? Like, who is Macy's Wait, customer? Wait, hold on. There's what? a cat in the video. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Other side. Oh, who's this cat? I love this cat. <laughs> no, yeah. behind you, over behind your right you. shoulder. Sorry. I'm making you look, but there really is. I, I'm it's sorry. grabbing treats as we speak. No, just kidding. Just kidding. That's really funny. It was really cute. Yeah, it was really cute. <laughs> it looks like a statue. It's not moving. Um, Mary, uh, who is the Macy's customer, though? Like, I do think about um, who's shopping at these places. Yeah, so I would say about half their customer base or more than half their customer base is probably earning less than 75,000. Mm -hmm. So it's a household income that's being squeezed by inflation. And so that's leaving them with less discretionary income to spend on apparel. One thing that is, has turned out to be strong and is a good draw for them, of course, is cosmetics. And that's mm -hmm. the reason why you've seen them expand the, the cosmetics presence in all of their stores. Every year, it seems like it's been expanded.
Is that blue? That's blue mercury, drop, right? And it's higher margin. <laughs> and that's blue mercury, correct? Oh yeah. Well, so yeah, not all of the stores have blue mercury, okay. but yes, that includes blue mercury, and of course, blue mercury, which is more upscale, uh, is also you know it's a growing chain for them, and they delivered two percent positive comps in the quarter. So well, yeah. yes. Love my lotions and <laughs> yeah, from Blue Mercury <laughs> everywhere. Okay. Like, and I'm sure you know investors love the margins when it comes to anything, whether it's perfumes or cosmetics. It's pretty crazy. Hey, the other thing I do love, uh, I'm Carol Masser, and I like going to TJ Maxx companies. I'm just going to put it out there, um, and I probably need some interventions. But uh, having said that, TJ Maxx, we also uh, got some news from them. We got earnings, and they also are taking a stake in a Mideast brand. What do we need to know about this one? Yeah, so because the company has really created this winning formula, and what that means is there's years and years of knowledge and expertise, plus they've made major investments in their people, so they have longevity with their employees. In, you know, this includes training buyers. It takes four to five years, by the way, to train a new buyer, wow. just to give you an idea. So with this expertise, and as they have grown up through the ranks, this gives them an opportunity to continue to grow internationally. They have always had an interest in Mexico. So, of course, we saw that news after the first quarter in which they it took a, a um, entered into a joint venture with Grupo AXA. So they're going to be able to use the secret sauce in helping those businesses grow, which will make their investments flourish. And so the same thing is going to happen with this latest investment, which is a Dubai-based company hmm. operating in the Middle East that operates about 100 brands for less is the uh, the name of the store concept um, in that market. And could we see more? Absolutely, because this is a good use of their cash investing in and in being able to capitalize on their own expertise yeah. and allowing for, you know, some of these executives that they've groomed to be able to have a place to deploy their expertise. So yes, we're gonna see more of that. And that just goes to show you that when you're looking at retail, off prices winning, and TJX being the largest, it's a $56 billion global company, the only one that's global and off price, and the only one that also has e -com. It's and a, they appeal to a wide customer base. I keep thinking it's, broad, it's right? amazing that nobody's been able to kind of mirror what they are doing uh, on the scale that they are, that they really just own that. Hey, Mary, thank you so much. Mary Ross Gilbert, she's Bloomberg Intelligence Senior Retail Analyst. Um,